Hello nurses and hello top na church. Welcome back to our YouTube channel and welcome na naman sa ating panibagong common board question topic. So muli ating pag-uusapan ng ating community health nursing so itutuloy po natin ang ating rationalization sa mga common board questions na lumalabas sa ating nursing practice 1. Okay so next situation. Public health nurses have important roles in ensuring the well-being of the family. They themselves should be empowered as they assist family clients in enabling their capacities to maintain and improve their health status. Number 39, the nurse explains that families pass through a predictive stages. This statement is based on blank models. A. System models. B. Focal models. C. Structural functional model. Or D. Development model. Okay? So, take note sa ating keyword, predictive stages. Okay? If the family pass through a predictive stages, saan po itong model? Okay, so isa-isahin natin. So, sa letter A, system model. System model is Bowen's family system theory. So, Bowen's model views family as an emotional unit that nature of a family members are intensely connected emotionally. So, ang ibig sabihin ng system models, all members of the family are interconnected. So, yung keyword nyo dapat sa system model is family members are interconnected. So, mali na ang letter A. So, sa letter C naman, yung structural functional model, Structural functional model, it views the family as an open social system naman. So, ang keyword naman natin dyan is open social system and as a subsystem within society. So, mali na rin yung ating letter C, structural functional model. So, the correct answer here is letter D. Okay? So, letter D is the correct answer because under your family development, uh, development theory, It is a set of ordered stages that progress from birth to death. Okay? So, according to Duval in 1957, your Duval's theory is based on the traditional nuclear intact family that families will move through each stage in order across time. So, merong predictive stages po yan from birth to death. Okay? So, a family will move from one stage to to the next after all members successfully master the task within a stage. So, the correct answer here is letter D. This is based on the family development theory. Okay? So, letter D is the correct answer. Okay, so question number 40. Which of the following would best indicate a maturational crisis? A. Illness B. Death C. Marriage or D. Unemployment Okay, so take note. Ang hinahanap po natin dito is an example of a maturational crisis. Maturational crisis is also known as your developmental crisis. Okay, so A, illness, B, death, C, marriage, or D, unemployment. Okay, so isa-isahin po natin ang ating choices. So letter A, illness. So illness is not a maturational crisis kasi ang illness ay an example of your situational crisis. Also with your death, death is a situational crisis. So, cross out illness and death. So, mali na yung A and B. So, between C and D, ang maturational dyan, which is part of developmental crisis, is your marriage. Okay? Marriage is an example of a maturational crisis because it naturally occurring event during lifespan. Itong unemployment din naman kasi, anything na related sa job, okay? That is an example of your situational crisis crisis din. Okay? So, take note, we have your three types of your crisis. So, we have your maturational crisis. Ito yung tinatawag natin na developmental crisis. A crisis that occurs across the lifespan. So, it is a critical period of increased vulnerability. An example of these are the following. Number one, graduating high school, leaving for college, and getting married. Okay? Ang situational crisis naman natin, A crisis that arises from events that are extraordinary. Mga unanticipated loss or change experience in everyday life, like in your uh, divorce, loss or change in job or unemployment, and the death of loved ones. And pag sinabi naman nating adventitious crisis, these are the crises that is unplanned and accidental. Okay? So example are the natural disasters, crimes, national disasters, And we have your flood, fire, war, riots, and airplane crashes. So the correct answer here is letter C. 
Okay? Matura uh, maturation crisis example is your marriage. Okay, next, question number 41. Providing crisis intervention is an important part of A. Primary prevention B. Health promotion C. Secondary prevention or D. Tertiary prevention Okay, so crisis intervention is an important part of Letter C. Okay, secondary prevention. Okay, so if we say crisis intervention, that is an important part of our secondary level of prevention. So, what is crisis intervention? So, pag sinabi po natin crisis intervention, crisis intervention is an immediate and short-term emergency response to mental, emotional, physical, and behavioral stress. So, take note, we have your keyword immediate and short-term. Okay, short-term lang po siya. Short-term emergency response to mental, emotional, physical, and behavioral stress. So, your uh, crisis intervention is part of your secondary prevention. So, if we say secondary prevention, secondary prevention focuses on interventions that identify mental health problems early and reduce the duration and prevalence of the mental illness. So, example for community mental health nurses, it includes conducting screening surveys that focuses on identifying mental illness in people within schools or community. Ano pa? Referring clients for mental health treatment and providing crisis intervention to a community that has encountered a natural or a man-made disaster. So, in short, if we say crisis intervention, crisis intervention is part of of secondary level of prevention. Okay? Then next, question number 42. The nurse observes that the family is exhibiting strengths in the face of hardship they are facing. The best description of the strengths that the nurse is observing is A. Power B. Resilience C. Projection or D. Faith Okay, so keyword, the family is exhibiting strengths. In the face of hardship they are facing So, ano daw po yung observe ni nurse dito? So, is it power, resilience, projection, or faith? So, the correct answer here is letter B, resilience So, if we say resilience, resilience is matatag okay? So, pinapakita dito na matatag yung family So, family resiliency is the ability of the family As a functional system to withstand and rebound from adversity So, it often focuses on the strength, processes vary over time, and no single model of healthy functioning fits all families or situation. So, ang pinapakita po ng pamilya dito is yung kanilang resiliency, which means matatag po yung family kasi kaya po nilang i-withstand yung adversity, okay? So, letter B is the correct answer. The next question, number 43, the nurse assesses the father's role within the family to be primarily formal. Okay? So, keyword, formal role of the father in the family. So, what did the family explain as being his major functions within the family? So, A, comforter, B, taxi driver, C, caregiver, or D, confidant. Okay? So, alin daw dito yung formal family role ni father? as explained in the major functions of the father within the family. So, the correct answer here is letter B, taxi driver. Okay? So, bakit? Kasi take note, dalawa ang role natin na tinatawag dito. So, we have your formal roles and the informal roles. Okay? Pag sinabi natin formal roles, these are the expected sets of behaviors associated with family positions. Example of the formal roles of the father in the family are breadwinner, homemaker, house repairman, chauffeur or the taxi or bus driver, child caretaker, financial manager, and cook. While the informal roles of the father in the family are the roles that influence the psychological dimension within the family by determining whether, how, and by whom emotional needs are met. Examples of these roles are the following. Comforter, caregiver, and confidant or the advisor. Okay? So, madali lang tatandaan ang informal roles ni tatay. Letter C na tatlo. So, comforter, caregiver, and confidant or the advisor. Okay? So, the best example of your formal role of the father in the family is being a taxi or bus driver. Okay? So, yun po yung ating sagot. So, letter B is the correct answer. Then, next. Question number 44, the nurse is educating the family regarding the general need for adequate nutrition, rest, and physical activity. 
which level of prevention does this describe? So, A, tertiary prevention, B, secondary prevention, C, health maintenance, or D, primary prevention. Okay? So, ano daw ang ating ineducate sa family? So, health education regarding to adequate nutrition, rest, and physical activity is part of your primary level of prevention. So, the correct answer here is letter D. Okay? So, if we say primary level of prevention, it involves your immunization, health education, nutrition, rest, and physical activities. While under your secondary prevention, it involves the early diagnosis and prompt treatment of a disease. Okay? While your tertiary prevention, it involves minimizing the effects of a long-term illness or disability including rehabilitation. Primary prevention, wala pang sakit. Health promotion activities. Secondary prevention, pwedeng i-diagnose or i-treat na yung sakit. And tertiary prevention is for rehabilitation. Okay? So, take note, we have your three levels of prevention. Primary level, secondary level, and tertiary level of prevention. So, under the primary prevention, maraming letter H dyan. So, health promotion activities, health education, healthy lifestyle habits like your rest, sleep, hygiene and sanitation, immunization, and nutrition. Okay? So, yun po yung mga nasa primary level of prevention. Under the secondary level of prevention, it includes your early detection of the disease, like in your screening test, testing, diagnostic exams, yan, okay? quarantine, contact tracing, case finding, and your treatment. Okay? While under your tertiary level of prevention, it involves rehabilitation. Okay? Kasi more on health restoration na po tayo dyan. So, it prevents death, it prevents complication, and the disability. Okay? So, pag sinabi natin na immunization, nutrition, adequate arrest that is under the level of primary prevention. Okay? Okay, so next situation, public health nurses use their nursing skills in the application of public health functions and provisions of social assistance to their clients. So question number 45, which of the following statements best describes public health nursing? A. Services are best implemented only in far-flung and hard-to-reach areas. B. Services are rendered free of charge to people in the catchment area. Or C. It involves home care to the sick people who cannot be confined in the hospital. Or D. It puts emphasis on health promotive and preventive services. Okay? So, ang hinahanap po natin dito is the best description of the public health nursing. Okay, so kung i-apply natin dito yung test-taking strategy natin, mabilis lang natin mahanap yung tamang sagot kasi positive answer ang hinahanap natin. So, tingnan natin ang letter A. Okay, nakikita natin meron po siyang word na only in the far-flung and hard-to-reach areas. Okay, so the word only makes it wrong kasi hindi lang naman sila nagbibigay ng services sa mga far-flung and hard-to-reach areas. So, mali na yung letter A. Sa letter B naman natin, ang nagpamali naman dyan is the word free of charge. Take note, public health nursing services is not free of charge, okay? So, hindi po free ang services natin sa public health nursing. So, letter A and letter B are incorrect answers. So, letter C and letter D. Letter C, basahin ang letter C, it involves home care to the sick people who cannot be confined in the hospital, okay? So, who cannot be confined in the hospital? So, hindi lang po yung mga pasyente na hindi na i-co-confine sa hospital ang ating binibigyan ng ng ating uh, care or ng ating uh, assistance. So, mali din yung letter C. So, take note that public health nursing focuses on preventive and not curative services. So, the correct answer here is letter D. Okay? So, letter D is the correct answer kasi test-taking strategy, ang, ma ang lalabas ng sagot dyan is letter D because the catchment area in the PHN consists the residential community. Many of whom are well individuals who have greater need for preventive rather than the curative services. Okay? The next, number 46, the current emphasis for public health practice is A. Improving environmental sanitation B. Controlling epidemic diseases C. Preventing communicable disease or D. Advocating for social justice. Okay? So, ang tinatanong po dito sa number 46 is the current emphasis for public health practice. Okay? So, the current emphasis for public health practice is advocating for social justice. Okay? So, letter D is the correct answer. Kasi yan po yung current emphasis of public health. So, the current emphasis for public health practice is advocating social justice. 
social justice demands more than fair distribution of resources in extreme public health emergencies. Especially nowadays during this pandemic, kailangan talaga natin ng fair distribution of resources. So, current emphasis of public health is the social justice. Okay? Then next, number 47, the public health nurse must participate in the essential services that are relevant and accessible to the family and the community. This include A. Working and enforcing laws to regulate health and ensure safety. B. Diagnosing and investigating health problems of the country. C. Informing, educating, and empowering the people about health. Or D. Monitoring health status and completing a community assessment. So, which one is relevant and accessible to the family and to the community? So, alin dito ang pinaka pwedeng gawin ni nurse kapag siya ay makikipag-participate for an essential services okay? to a family and community? So, letter C is the correct answer. Why? Kasi informing, educating, and empowering the people about health. So, take note. Itong letter C, informing, educating, and empowering the people about health, yan yung pwedeng gawin ni nurse in the community. Okay? So, letter C is the correct answer. So, the public health nurse monitors the health status in several ways. Completing a community assessment is only one way that the health status is monitored. The public health nurse would not diagnose or not solve world problems or work in a law enforcement so hindi siya magtatrabaho doon rather the public health care nurse would participate with local regulators to protect communities and empower people to address health issues okay so number 48 collecting data and monitoring the health status of the population defines which of the following core public health functions a quality assurance b assessment c policy development or d health promotion Okay, so take note, our keyword here is collecting data and monitoring the health status. Okay, so collecting data and monitoring the health status. So in your public health core function, meron lang po tayo doon na assessment, meron din tayo doon na policy development and quality assurance. So wala po tayong health promotion doon. So wala pong health promotion at wala ding uh, health promotion at saka wala ding prevention sa ating sa ating public core function okay so prevention and health promotion is not a core function assurance is making sure essential services are available and policy development naman is needed to provide leadership in developing policies so if the nurse is collecting and monitoring the health status of the community thereby the nurse is using the assessment okay assessment core function of public health so assessment consists of systematic data collection and monitoring the health status so again so we have only uh, three core public functions so we have our assessment policy development and assurance so take note wala po tayong prevention and health promotion core functions sa public health so pag sinabi natin assessment ang ginagawa po natin dito is monitoring health to diagnose and to investigate sa ating policy development naman we inform we educate and we empower we mobilize the community partnership and we develop policies. At pag sinabi naman nating assurance, we are enforcing the laws, okay? Linking and providing care and assuring a competent workforce. Komo na ginagamit sa board exam yung assuring competent workforce or yung my staff, okay? Assuring na yung ating health service ay inaabot ng mga tao and assurance is to evaluate, okay? Again, three public health core function, assessment, policy development, and assurance. The next, number 49, public health services are provided by government facilities. What is the most appropriate response of the public health nurse to the statement that the government should give these health services free of charge to people? Okay, so A, yes, and for that reason, we should choose our government officials wisely during elections. B. Yes, I agree, but right now, the government does not have enough resources to do that. Letter C. That is an ideal situation that our government does not have enough resources to do that. Letter D. Many of the health services are given free, but we people pay for them just the same through our taxes. Okay, so alin dito ang most appropriate? So, 
the most appropriate response of the nurse here is letter D. So, the most appropriate response by the nurse here is letter D. Many of the health services are given free, but we people pay for them just the same through our taxes. So, people pay indirectly for public health services. So, hindi natin nalalaman na tayo pala nagbabayad din ng ating ng ating uh, health services via our taxes. So, community health services including the public health services are prepaid paid services through our taxation. Okay? So, yung binabayad po natin taxes, okay? So, yun po yung napupunta rin sa ating, uh, sa ating uh, public health good kasi nakakapag-avail tayo ng health services through our paid taxes. Okay? So, indirectly mean lang po yun. Okay? Indirect mean lang po yun ang pagbabayad natin at na-avail din natin yan through our public health services. So, the correct answer here is letter D. Alright, the next situation, non-communicable diseases remain to be the major health challenges in the Philippines and globally. The specific population group that are mostly afflicted by these chronic conditions such as diabetes and cardiovascular diseases are those age 60 and above. Alright, so number 50, when caring for a patient with type 2 diabetes who has been discharged, which topic will be the most important to include in your health teaching? Okay, so take note, the most important topic that will you include in your health teaching. So A, the impact of the patient's family history on the likelihood of developing the disease or the diabetes. B, symptoms indicating that the patient should contact the healthcare provider. C, the effect of the endogenous insulin on transportation of glucose into cells. Or D, the function of the liver in formation of glycogen and gluconeogenesis. Okay, so which of the following topic will be the most important? So, very obvious yung ating sagot. So, letter B is the correct answer. Okay? So, you must include in your health teaching when the patient uh, suffers or uh, feels any symptoms that indicating uh, any abnormalities, she should uh, contact her immediate healthcare provider. Okay? So, one of the tasks for clients with chronic illness is to prevent and manage a crisis. The client needs instruction on recognition of the symptoms of hyperglycemia and the appropriate actions to take if these symptoms occur. So, other information may be included in the client teaching but is not as essential as your letter B. Okay? So, in the client's self-management of the illness. So, letter B is the most relevant and the most important topic that should be included by the nurse. Next, 51. To obtain the most complete information when doing an assessment for a 75 years old patient, you will A. Ask the patient to write down medical problems and medications B. Use a geriatric assessment instrument to evaluate the patient C. Interview both the patient and the primary patient caregiver or D. Review the patient chart for the history of the medical problems. So, the most complete information ang, in, ang uh, tinatanong sa ating number 51. So, the most complete information to obtain your data here is by using geriatric assessment instrument. So, letter B is the correct answer. So, the most complete information about the patient will be obtained through the use of an assessment instrument specific to the geriatric population which includes information about the both medical diagnosis and treatments and about functional health patterns and abilities. So, a review of the medical record, interview with the patient and caregiver, and a written information by the patient are all included in a comprehensive geriatric assessment. So, in short, yung letter B natin, that is an umbrella technique. Okay? Umbrella technique kasi nandun na po lahat yun, Okay? So, use a geriatric assessment Tool, okay? So, letter B is the correct answer. The next, number 52, which information about a 77 years old patient who is being assessed the public health nurse is of utmost concern? The patient, A, says, I don't go on my daily walk since I had pneumonia two months ago. B, tells the nurse that I prefer to manage my life without much help from others. Or letter C, uses three different medication for chronic heart and joint problems or D, organizes medication in a marked pill box so I don't forget them, okay? So, alin dito yung pinaka, ano, mangangamba yung nurse, okay? 
or magkakaroon siya ng utmost concern. So, alin dito ang maging concern ni nurse? So, hindi natin magiging concern nurse yung letter D kasi tama pa naman ang ginagawa niya. Nagmamark siya ng pillbox para hindi niya makalimutan ng mga gamot niya. So, letter C din naman. Tama din naman yon na kapag meron kang chronic heart and joint problems, uh, you are using three different medications. So, tama din ang C at D. So, letter Letter B, tama din ang letter B kasi sabi niya, I prefer to manage my life without much help from others. So, the correct answer here is letter A. I don't go on my daily walks since I had pneumonia two months ago. Okay? So, mas mababahala si nurse sa letter A. Bakit? Bakit mas mababahala si nurse? So, inactivity and immobility lead to rapidly loss of function in older adult, adults. Okay? So, pag hindi na siya naglalakad-lakad or uh, less na ang activity ng ating uh, mga older adults, mag magkakaroon sila ng uh, rapid loss of function. Okay? So, the nurse should develop a plan to prevent further deconditioning and restore the function of the patient. So, self-management is appropriate for the independently living older adults sa letter uh, letter B kanina. So, on average, an older adult takes seven different medication. So, the use of three medication is not unusual for this patient. Sa letter C naman po yun. And the use of memory devices to assist with safe medication like the marking of the pill box para hindi niya makalimutan na gamot niya ay recommended talaga yan para sa mga older adults. Okay? So, letter A is the correct answer. Okay, so number 53, when caring for an older adult who lives in a rural area, you will A. Ensure transportation to appointment with the healthcare provider. B. Assess the patient for chronic diseases that are unique to rural areas. C. Obtain adequate medication for the patient for last that lasts for 4 to 6 months. Or D. Suggest that the patient move to an urban area for better health care. So, alin dito ang inyong uh, gagawin? So, pinakagagawin mo dito, nurse, since siya ay nakatira sa rural area, you must ensure transportation for any kind of appointment to her or his physician. So, letter A is the best answer. So, ensuring transportation for appointment with the healthcare provider. Okay? So, letter A is the most appropriate and the best answer. Bakit letter A ang ating isasagot? Okay, so letter A kasi transportation can be a barrier to accessing health services in rural areas. Kasi mahirap ang sakayan doon. So the patient living in a rural area may lose the benefits of your familiar situation and social support by moving to the urban area. So hindi naman siya pwede na ano, basta-basta na lang lilipat sa urban area. And there are no chronic diseases unique to rural, rural areas, okay? Wala namang ganun na endemic yung chronic diseases ang rural area, okay? Because this medication may change, the nurse should help the patient plan for obtaining medication through alternate means such as mail or delivery services, not by purchasing large quantities of the medication. At saka huwag kang kumuha ng masyadong maraming gamot kasi baka naman mag-expire lang, okay? So the best answer here is letter A, transportation. Next, number 54, which of these patients assigned to you is most likely to need planning for long-term nursing management? Keyword, long-term nursing management. So, A, 71 years old with appendicitis who has had an emergency appendectomy. B, 60 years old with bilateral knee osteoarthritis who weighs 350 pounds or 159 kilograms. Or C, a 54 years old cholecystitis who has had a laparoscopic cholecystectomy or D, 62-year-old uh, with acute sinusitis who will require antibiotic therapy for 5 days. Okay, so alin dito yung most likely na kailangan ng long-term nursing management? So cancellation technique tayo, tatanggalin natin lahat ng mga acute acute conditions, okay? So, tatanggalin natin dito yung mga acute medical conditions like your letter D, acute sinusitis. Tanggal yan kasi hindi yan kailangan ng long-term nursing management. Next, sa tatanggalin natin is letter A. Why? Kasi appendicitis, nagkaroon ng ap uh, emergency appendectomy, tanggal naman na so hindi na kailangan ng long-term nursing management. The next, ang next sa tatanggalin natin is letter C kasi nga nag-undergo naman na siya ng laparoscopic cholecystectomy. So, Ang naiwan na lang dito is yung letter B.
Okay? Letter B kasi osteoarthritis and obesity are chronic problems that will require planning for long-term intervention such as physical therapy and nutrition counseling. Okay? So, agalitin ko, ang osteoarthritis ay isang chronic problem that will require planning for long-term intervention such as physical therapy and nutritional counseling. Okay, the next number 55, the Elderly Filipino Week is observed and celebrated every A, last week of September, B, first week of October, C, last week of December, or D, first week of November. Okay, so under 55 question, Elderly Filipino Week is celebrated every first week of October. So letter B is the correct answer for number 55. Pursuant to the Presidential Proclamation Number 470, Series of 1994, it declares that the first week of October of every year is the Elderly Filipino Week or Linggo ng Katandaang Filipino. That is your celebration every first week of October. And pag sinabi naman natin March, March is the National Women's Month. First week of October is the Filipino Elderly Week. Then, second week of October is the National Mental Health and the last week of October is the Nurses Week. Ulitin ko, first week of October, Filipino Elderly Week. Second week of October, National Mental Health and the last week of October is the Nurses Week. Okay, March is considered as the National Women's Month. The next number 56, the social pension for indigent senior citizens is the additional government assistance monthly coming from what agency? So A, Department of Budget and Management, B, Department of Health, C, Department of Social Welfare and Development, or D, National Economic and Development Authority. So take note, meron pong buwan ang natatanggap na pension ang mga matatanda or mga senior citizens natin. Okay? So it is amounting to uh, 500 pesos monthly and yearly is around 6,000 po ang natatanggap nila. And galing po yan sa Department of Social Welfare and Development. So, letter C po ang sagot natin dyan. So, sino po bang nabibigyan ng pension? Sila po yung mga walang, uh, walang uh, insurance or walang mga natatanggap ng mga pension galing sa ibang uh, agency like the SSS, GSIS. So, sila po binibigyan ng gobyerno ng 500 pesos uh, monthly or 6,000 pesos every year po yan, okay? So, the social pension for the indigent senior citizen is one of the provisions stated under the Section 5 of the Republic Act 9994 or otherwise known as the Expanded Senior Citizen Act of 2010, okay? So, yun po, meron po sila natatanggap na 500 pesos monthly from the Department of Social Welfare and development. So, DSWD po yun. Okay? So, kapag naabot naman nila ang kanilang 100 years old, uh, sila po yung uh, nabibilang na sa mga senteran yan at may natatanggap din naman po silang 100,000 pesos. Okay? So, that is your letter C from DSWD. Next, number 57. Which nursing intervention is holistic approach to an older adult? A. Performs glucose testing during weekly worship service. B. Wills ambulatory adults to exercise when running late or C. Assigns female nurses to older women who are Islamic or D. Allows older adults in nursing home to eat meals alone. Take note, holistic approach po ang tinatanong natin dito. So, totality principle. So, alin dito ang sagot? Letter C. Okay, so pag nag-assign ka ng nurse sa older women who are Islamic, okay, so that is a total uh, nursing care. So, letter C is the correct answer. It assigns female nurses to older women who are Islamic. So, that is an holistic approach to an older adult. So, the nurse uses a holistic approach to the care of an older female adult who is Islamic because the woman and her family are more likely to be willing participants in therapeutic regimen that respects a tenant of their culture. So, letter C is the holistic approach to care an older woman. Okay, so letter C is the correct.